Saint Spiridon. Saint Spiridon was born on Cyprus. He married early. Like his parents, he was a shepherd, and he led a very pious life of fasting, prayer, and hospitality. His wife died early on, and Saint Spiridon devoted even more of his time to God. For that, he received the gift of healing and banishing demons from men. For his many acts of goodness, he was elected a bishop, and he continued working great wonders from the episcopal throne. On one occasion, there was a horrible drought all over the island, and by his prayer, the saint caused a massive rainfall that brought the abundance of the fruits of the earth. Later on, on account of multitudes of sins, the drought struck again. This caused great joy to everyone who has piled up food, for they could sell their wares at higher prices. One of the merchants didn't even open up his stores, but has waited for the drought to press even more so he could obtain more money. One of the people struck with hunger came to St. Spiridon to complain about the merchant, saying that he refused to sell him any wheat. The saint comforted him, saying that soon he will be filled with wheat and that the merchant will become hungry. That night there was a horrible thunderstorm, and the resulting flash floods destroyed the merchant's granaries. He called out to people to collect his wheat, so he wouldn't go bankrupt. But all the people did was gather up the wheat and take it home. Seeing upon himself the clear punishment of God, he came to the poor man's house and told him to gather as much as wheat as he wanted from the flooded granaries. However, the rich merchant did not get cured of his avarice. After the flood cleared, a farmer that was known to the saint came to the merchant, asking for some wheat. He refused to sell any, on account that he had no gold on himself. The farmer went to St. Spiridon, who gave him a gold nugget, which he was supposed to pawn to the merchant and return it to the saint once the drought was over. The farmer did as commanded, receiving wheat in exchange for the nugget. Once the drought has ended, the farmer brought the nugget back from the merchant and brought it to St. Spiridon. The saint then took the farmer to a field in order, as he said, to return the gold to the one who gave it. And lo and behold, like the staff of Moses, the gold nugget turned into a snake that fled into grass. Once, a certain man on the island was unjustly convinced to death, immediately set out to save the man, but he and his entourage were prevented by a flooding stream. With a prayer to Christ our God, the saint and everyone with him were able to walk over water. The news of this miracle quickly reached the judge, who immediately set the innocent man free. Saint Spiridon was in attendance during the First Ecumenical Council, where the heresy of Arius was condemned. There, despite being unlearned, Saint Spiridon put many Arian philosophers to shame, who later testified that, despite their learning in rhetorics, they couldn't outsmart a simple shepherd. During one such debate, in order to portray the Trinity, Saint Spiridon took a brick and pressed it with his hand. Immediately out of the brick there came out water, fire and clay, which the saint used as symbols of how three can be one. A certain visitor visited the saint during Lent. On the island, at the time, was accustomed to eat all manner of food after the sunset. However, the saint followed Lent even more strictly, and he would only eat on certain days. Seeing that his guest is tired, the saint searched for the house and saw that he has no flour, so he immediately boiled a ham for him. The guest didn't want to eat the ham, saying that he is a Christian, but the saint rebuked him, saying that we ought not to refuse food offered by our hosts and that everything's pure to the pure. The saint had one daughter, Irene. She was such a kind soul that she was made worthy of the kingdom of heaven. She died rather young. Soon a certain woman came weeping to St. Spiridon, saying that she gave some jewelry to Irene while she was still alive. The saint searched his house to no avail. He went to her grave, praying fervently to God. Suddenly, Irene appeared to her father and told him where she hid the jewels. He bade her to sleep until the general resurrection of the dead, and the woman's jewels were restored to her. At one point, St. Spiridon went to visit Emperor Constance, to whom St. Spiridon was revealed in a vision as the only man who could heal him from a certain illness. As St. Spiridon was about to enter the palace, a guard taught him, on account of his haggard clothing, to be a mere beggar, and he slapped him. The saint immediately turned the other cheek, and the guard realized that he is dealing with a bishop. 
immediately asking for Spiridon's forgiveness. After restoring the Emperor to health, a certain pagan woman came to the saint, carrying her dead son in her arms. The saint asked his deacon what to do, to which the deacon said, Are you not going to invoke Christ, the giver of life? The saint did, and the child rose from the dead. His mother, completely out of herself with joy, fell dead to the ground and saint, upon hearing the same advice from the deacon, resurrected her as well. Once, a certain merchant bought 100 goats from St. Spiridon. However, he paid for 99, thinking that the saint, in his meekness, wouldn't notice. As he was leading the goats away, one got particularly stubborn and didn't want to move. Try as he might, the merchant couldn't make the goat go with him, at which the saint asked him if he paid the price in full. Seeing that he's caught in his sin, the merchant prayed for and received forgiveness. There is one more miracle involving the saint's flock. Some brigands came by night and attempted to steal some cattle, but they all got paralyzed with unseen power. That was how they were caught red-handed by the saint in the morning. Promising to repent, the saint prayed for their release, and they went on their way receiving a ship from Saint Spiridon, as a reward for spending a sleepless night, as he joked. At one time, the saint visited a certain village church with his deacon. Being tired, he ordered the deacon to sing a short prayer. The deacon, having a magnificent voice, started to drag the prayer on and on. This so annoyed the saint that he told him to shut up, and immediately the deacon became mute. His family begged the saint to absolve him, which the saint did. But now, instead of his magnificent voice, he stuttered, for the Lord saw fit to take away from him the source of his pride. At one time, he came to a village church and began Vesper service with only the clergy present. He blessed the empty church, saying, Peace be with you, and immediately an unearthly, invisible choir responded, and with your spirit. This fleshless choir kept responding to his prayers, and its majestic singing started to draw villagers to the church, but upon entering, they were struck with fear, for there they saw only St. Spiridon with a couple of priests. A neighbor of the saint kept asking him to pray for her husband, as he was a pagan. That pagan was eating at the saint's house, and during the meal, the bishop told one of his servants the following. There is a messenger that is about to inform me that my whole flock got lost and devoured by wolves. Tell him that soon another messenger will arrive, informing me that the flock's been found and that not a single animal was harmed. All soon occurred as the bishop predicted. The pagan was certain that Saint Spiridon was a god, and, like pagans with the apostles, wanted to offer him sacrifice. Corrected by the saint and taught by his wife, the pagan man soon received baptism. The saint was completely careless as regards to money. He had an arrangement with a certain merchant that was as follows. The merchant could take as much money as he wanted from the church donation box to use for his business, but he had to return the money upon his return from the voyage. That went on for many years, but overcome with greed, the merchant did not return the gold upon return one time. Come next voyage and all his business endeavors fail. When he returned to Cyprus, he went to the saint to beg for alms, and Saint Spiridon told him to fetch gold from the donation box. The poor man opened it and, sadly, it was empty, for he failed to return the money as usual. He returned to the saint and Saint Spiritan told him, Why, dear brother, no other hand opened up that box but yours. If you fail to restore what you owed, that is the sole reason why it's empty. He too felt ashamed of his sin and has repented of it. Saint Spiridon died in 350 AD during prayer. He has achieved the absolute heights of sanctity despite being a bishop. His relics are now found in Corfu, and the saint himself has shown numerous miracles after death, including saving the island from a siege, driving Ottomans back with fear as he approached them with a glistening sword in his right hand as he hovered over waters.